Okay, let's get started. Um, so today I have a very, very big announcement for you guys, which is, it's going to be for the sake of my YouTube channel, for the health of my channel, that I will be making a very huge change to the way I upload my videos. I will no longer be uploading my videos in full to YouTube anymore. So the only way to see my streams is to join the stream, to see the full critique hour. YouTube will now on only get clips. Um, either 20 minute clips or 15 minute clips, it just depends on how I want to uh, work with each individual video. Um, Hi Artless Aesthetic, thank you. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is one, YouTube stopped recommending my videos just because I believe truly it's because they're too long. They're an hour. So it's going to help the channel grow if my videos are more recommendable. Um, no one clicks on hour long videos, so you know I'm pretty sure that it's going to help out the channel. Unfortunately, 90% of my channel is hour long videos. So I don't know if I'm even still considered a channel that can be recommended at all anymore. Um, but here's hoping that I do this for like a year and from now until next year, my videos have, um, I know have, that, that the whole change that I did actually benefits the channel in a big way. So yes, no more full YouTube videos, full critique hour videos on YouTube. They will be uploaded, unlisted to YouTube um to my patrons of a dollar or more um so any patron of any tier will get them um and that's uh pretty much the only way i could do this because if i feel bad not having it on my record on my um on my channel history but i will not make them active videos that are recommendable it's only going to be the clip videos of these uh, of these channels um, so that's just one dollar a month to get the full access to all eight videos every month, all, all eight critique hours. That's eight classes of like lectures and, and cohesive um, uh, lessons about subject matter for just a dollar. So it's close. It is nothing. It's, it's not a lot. But the reason why I'm attaching it to the tier system on, on, on um, Patreon is it'll also help my Patreon grow and it'll also bring back support for the channel from another avenue. So I feel like this is the best way for me to remedy the Patreon uh, uh, goal and remedy the YouTube recommendations channel slowing down business because it's gone down. It's gone way down. I get less than a thousand views a video where two years ago I got like 15,000 views a video. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm trying not to stress out thinking about that last 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 fact I just shared, but um, hopefully you know it, it it does help and it does change the way we are uh, you know dealing with with YouTube changes uh, helps us deal with YouTube changes. Um, <laughs> YouTube can help support an estimate for just three cents a day. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's get started on the critique hour. So what are we looking at today? I thought some 14-day challenge uh, might be fun because we haven't done one in a while and it's always good to do them um, between uh, a major, you know, like at the start of the year or, or something like that. It's always good while people are still crazy and, and excited and, and ready to start working a 14-day challenge critique. Any kind of diagnostic stuff is really great for that. Hi Dash, um, it's only sad for YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so if you're a if you're a subscriber, um, if you're a patron, you will get the full videos. Uh, nothing is really lost. It's just I will no longer be posting hour long videos on YouTube. Um, it's just not gonna happen anymore. Um, okay, so this piece here, uh, what's happening is that the whole face feels unwrapped. You feel, it feels like you flatten, you've ironed out the head. Um, what needs to happen is we need to completely rework what you've, what, what the decisions, the, the decisions you've made here, and what the how they've affected the, the the image. So you've given him these big 
Disney princess eyes, which I feel like have, yeah, they've made the face feel finished, but it's part of that other issue that students are dealing with nowadays, which is let's give everything anime eyes. And the reason why that's a problem is because you're losing a massive margin of realism when you enlarge the pupils this way. Right, he looked like a very big guy. And by big, I mean like Star Wars big, like unusual big. Like a creature, humanoid thing that was very big from outer space. Kind of like those Prometheus creatures, those people. He also had no jawline, so the jawline for men and the neckline are pretty close together. Usually the male neck is also just protrudes just a little bit. And so on the other side, we have an issue there as well. What I'm going to do is just fix one side and duplicate it over. because I don't have time because I have the other one to do as well. All right. So once you know the difference, the core difference is between male and female faces, you'll be able to pull off way more tasteful androgyny. So if you do have a character that What's the term for not not female, non-binary? Like uh, something like that. If you do have a genderless character that's not supposed to read in any particular way, you'll actually be able to pull that off without it looking like, again, a humanoid alien, which is what happens when uh, uh, an early you know, artist, a, a, a noob, tries to pull off something as complicated as androgyny or delicate androgyny. Um, way too early before they've even studied like the real measurement scale as well as um, anatomy differences between the male and the female face. There's a lot there's it's a whole other unit with my private tutoring students I just make them learn one gender uh, first and then we move on to the others and the reason why um, uh, we we do that is because we have to learn one, you know, one side of the spectrum so that you could understand how to pull it off for the others. Let me see if I even can put it in. So that the temple is actually quite far. All right, so I make them like completely perfect the female or male face first, and then then character design starts, then all that fun stuff starts because there's no more need to um to to. To, to stay in one uh, gender for too long, to stay in one uh, section for too long. And because what happens is by learning one, you learn what not to do for the other one. There's no need to... And then if you, if you do wait too long to learn one or the other, what happens is that you end up painting male faces that are way too girly, which is what, what might have happened with this artist here. He's used to painting female eyes in that size and I think that's what might have happened all right so the ears are a little bit I mean everyone's ears are a little bit asymmetrical um, these ears should not be asymmetrical actually they are now because I had to move the jaw they should not be asymmetrical I think I did move it no they should not um, so I'm just going to Raise the eyes up just a little bit. Male faces are usually a little bit longer. And female faces are usually a little bit shorter. The female eyes were accidental. My intention was to draw a very male face. Um, yeah, and um, when you draw females for really, really long time, for too long, like that's why I don't let students stay drawing females for too long in my private tutoring is because uh, you will you will have that permanent cuteness to everything you paint even if you're trying to paint the burliest dude you'll end up painting him with really big upper eyelids and he just looks like the fanciest cutest little guy but with like a gigantic thick neck and a gigantic body and it, it, at that point it's uncanny it's not androgynous it's uncanny all right so what i'm doing now is I'm just restructuring some of the blocking we have here trying to find exactly what you were doing with the nose the sides of the nose need to be part of the same value including the nostrils 
and then the nostril thickness what's happening here is that the thickness of the side of the head of the side of the nose it should typically be where the eyes end so if you're drawing a handsome face but almost everyone's nose is proportionate to their face you know you barely see that you know super super big nose on people um, almost always the nose somehow matches but if you were a snob in your past life then you're born with a really big nose <laughs> I'm joking. And um, I'm just going to limit that inner eye light. Doesn't need to be that pretty or that big. A big reason why we do that for the female characters is because um, there's that makeup quality that comes with females. All right, nice flat eyebrows. And I think um, what you're doing with the shadow under the eyes is too much so now he's like a handsome guy he still has the same beauty he still has that same uh cuteness to him but it's no longer a feminine cuteness it's a masculine handsomeness and i'm just gonna actually do one more little pinch on the sides just because i feel like i was a bit too cautious with all that But I want to show you guys a, a really quick trick. If you want to make him look a little bit less cutesy, uh, a little bit less, not effeminate, but a little less pretty boy, all you got to do is bring the eyes closer in together. What that does is that it gives it this masculineness. Because guys channel that, that ogre look. So if you want him to look a little bit less like an elf, and elves have these really big distances between the eyes, where the eyes are placed, not just big eyes, but lots of distance, we just do something like that. It makes him look a little bit more masculine, a little bit more organic as well, a little bit more realistic. But before, he had that cutesy look. And this eye was actually a little bit too far. All right, so I'm just going to tuck that in and do the before and after so you guys can see it. I wish I could have done more, but alas, I'll jump on to the other one and call it a day. So before, let me see if I can get rid of that stuff. All right, so you see how he was flattened? His eyes were gigantosaurus after. The nose, the smile, the mouth. Tell me that doesn't look like Ted Cruz. <clears throat> right. Yes, he, he looks like my adorable chunky cousin before. <laughs> um, so the reason why the 14 day, the reason why this is needed, this after is needed in your skill set is because this is the neutral universal and this is not. Plus, those pupils and iris were so huge, Robbie. They were gigantic. Um, you can see how that's a problem, right? They looked like sweet grandma eyes, you know? A little girl eyes. They did not look like the eyes you'd give a hunk or a, 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 a character that's supposed to be, uh, in the trope, it's supposed to be a strong character or a strong masculine character. Okay. This isn't the same person. Uh, what's going on? People are changing their names. Give him a big scar or do that with the eyes, I guess. Um, or speaking of ogres. Yeah. For us, uh, Ted Cruz. I'm just trying to catch up with the chat. I don't know what's going on. I'm kind of just, I feel like a really old boomer <laughs> right now among a bunch of, of, of youth. Okay, so the, you see the unwrapped look as well. Look at the jawline and the neck. And if you're unsure, paint eyes without pupil and iris. Did you guys know? Did you know? Hey, listen to me. Did you know that 
none of my, uh, unless they're like hyper skilled and they go in really skilled, none of my private tutoring students get to use pupil and iris in like the first month. None of them. Even the good ones, like unless they're really good and then I know that they won't fuck it up. But, you know, the ones that, that are even intermediate aren't allowed to do it. Because they just, they, there's so much structure in the eyes to learn. And so on the Reddit, I'm seeing all of you guys, and you guys are nowhere near intermediate, some of you, and you're drawing the people in the iris. I'm just wondering why. Because there's so much anatomy under there you guys don't have access to. Because, listen to me, listen to me right now. The reason why, the biggest reason why we avoid using the people in the iris too early is because it makes you think the eye is finished. Write that back to me. Even though it's not, it has no structure and it has really bad edges and has um, excessive contrast and all of that. When you paint the pupil in the eyes too early, it makes it makes you think the eye is done because you you do you 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 paint the thing that is the most entertaining about the eye, which is the specular highlights and the color and all of that. But if you're a mature artist, you realize the best thing about the eye is the eye socket. That's just like the the gold mine of skill that's what i what that's what i look at in order to see and assess how skilled an artist is i just look at how can they do an eye socket because there's so much skill required to paint a good one um and eyebrow texture like those things those two things are really they weigh a lot on uh the, the, on whether you know whether, whether or not the artist has skill who pulled it off so don't do the iris too soon thank you yes uh, because it makes you think the eye is finished. Don't draw the pupil, only draw blind people. Yes, uh, that's a simple way to say it. <laughs> and it makes you think the eye is finished when it's not, because you guys have bad edges and you have a lot of work left on those edges. So I hope this critique helped you. I wish I could go in depth more, but there's no time. Would you like to have your stuff critiqued? Go to isterbath.com and click on the Reddit icon here. Uh, join our subreddit. Submit your work and I pick it and critique it. That's where I pick most of the stuff, all the stuff that I covered today. Uh, I will no longer be submitting the full critique hours to my YouTube channel. I will only submit clips here on out and upload clips. The full clips are, the full videos are available for patrons of all tiers. Um, and uh, and uh, it's a good way to keep the channel growing. It's a good way to have Patreon grow. and. Um, the, le the, the smallest tier, $1 a month, $1 a month, will get you uh, access to all those videos. Um, so if you can, if you have used Patreon, if you feel like dealing with the Patreon checkout, uh, support me on Patreon for a dollar. It's $1 a month, $12 a year. Um, and if everybody, I know it's a very little amount, um, and, and, and the next guy might do it, but they really don't. Um, and it's just a way to keep the channel going. If it wasn't for my patrons, protecting my channel, the the limiting of my channel in the last year because of YouTube would have literally led to the effect of my livelihood. Like it would have completely affected me in a huge way. Um, my patrons are the reason why this is all still possible, why, why I can still do critique hour. Um, so thank you everyone who's ever joined as a patron. I really appreciate it. Uh, but if you feel like joining and you want to support in some way, just become a watcher. Um, it's a dollar a month. It's not mandatory to give any more than that. It's just a, I mean, it's not mandatory to give a dollar either. Uh, but it's just the only call I'm making is for uh, uh, the watcher tier. Of course, there's apprentice tier where you get educational material and all that. But that's a whole other thing. I've posted videos on that on my channel. Um, but for now, I'm just doing a call to all of my watchers um, to join, please, if you guys have the time. And I understand even a dollar nowadays is, is something you could be putting towards bus fare or an extra coffee a day. I understand. Um, but for those who want to send support my way. Um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. I stream on Twitch now. I do not stream on YouTube anymore. And um, uh, if you guys want to join daily sketch challenges, I'll be doing those again on Instagram. I will be uploading a community challenge very soon towards Valentine's Day. Something probably Valentine's Day themed for February. I'll upload it soon so that it gives you guys a month to do it. Um, if not, then it'll just be for the spring. It'll be like a spring harvest goddess type of equivalent of that. Um, and um, any other announcements? Portrait Studio is on sale. If anybody wants it, it will be on sale for the rest of January. Um, and then it'll go back on to non-sale price. 
Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye everyone.